Hey guys, Matt here and I'm back at it again with another GTX 1080 Partner Card review. This time on hand is GameWood's Phoenix GLH Edition. Last week I checked out the Gigabyte GTX 1080 G1 gaming model which boasted improved thermals when compared to Nvidia's Founders Edition. Unfortunately, despite a redesigned PCB and the upgraded cooler, the G1 gaming wasn't able to outperform the Founders Edition, resulting in very similar custom overclock performance. Although Gigabyte only went with a single 8-pin PCI Express power connector, that doesn't appear to be the issue, as others are reporting similar results on heavily modified models from ASUS and MSI for example. As disappointing as the initial board partner overclocking results have been, the improved thermals and slightly more affordable price tags are welcomed. Of course, with availability still poor, it's likely going to be a few weeks yet before we see the Pascal based 1080 and 1070 graphics cards selling at or near the MSRP. This sucks for those of us desperate to get our hands on one of these new cards at a reasonable price, but this is really nothing new. Almost all Nvidia and AMD high end GPUs have suffered the same poor availability early on in life. Anyway, once availability does improve and pricing stabilizes, one board partner I am expecting to deliver the goods is Gameward. When it comes to pricing, Game would always seem to be one of the most competitive, at least down here in Australia. Their GTX 980 Ti, which is a superb overclocker, has always been one of the cheaper options available. Having been so impressed with their GTX 980 Ti Phoenix Golden Sample Graphics Card, I've been really keen to check out the flagship GTX 1080 Phoenix Goes Like Hell Edition to see if it actually does go like hell. Before jumping into the benchmarks, let's take a closer look at the Phoenix GLH by stripping it down to see what makes it tick. Something you notice right away is just how massive this graphics card is. Every dimension has been supersized. Gameword hasn't just made it big for the sake of it either, and instead have made the most of the space available. The PCB measures 267mm long, while the card stretches 285mm long thanks to the oversized cooler. This huge cooler takes up not two, but three slots at 48mm thick, making this a two and a half or let's say three slot graphics card. In comparison, the Founders Edition cooler measures 35mm thick and 266mm long. More typical dimensions for a dual slot graphics card. The PCB is also 20mm taller than standard, allowing the Phoenix GLH to stand 133mm tall and the heat sinks to make use of the extra headroom. Underneath the large fan shroud, which I should point out has been constructed from plastic with anodized aluminium trimmings, we find two truly massive heat sinks. In total, there's 120mm by 185mm at 30mm thick worth of heatsink. Improving efficiency are three 8mm copper heat pipes, along with an additional two 6mm copper heat pipes. These heat pipes also connect to a large copper base. Pushing large volumes of air over this huge heatsink surface area are two big 100mm fans featuring Gamewood's new blade fin design. These fans are extremely quiet, even when the card has been placed under load for an extended period. That reworked PCB that I mentioned earlier has a similar 8 plus 2 phase power design seen on the Gigabyte G1 gaming card. The G1 Gaming featured R15 Magic Chokes, while the Gamewood card uses R22 Chokes. I'm not knowledgeable enough about these to tell you what the difference is, and I haven't been able to research anything useful. At a guess, I would say the R22s are rated for a higher capacity, but that's really just a guess. Anyway, what I can tell you is the Gamewood card also features a 6-pin PCIe power connector, along with a standard 8-pin connector. This affords the Phoenix GLH an extra 75 watts of power input. This hasn't proven particularly useful for other brands, so I'm keen to see if the Phoenix GLH can make use of the extra power. Out of the box, the game with GDX 1080 Phoenix GLH is clocked higher than Gigabyte's G1 Gaming, with a base clock speed of 1746 MHz and a boost clock of 1885 MHz. The memory has also been boosted from 5 GHz to 5.25 GHz, resulting in a data rate of 10.5 gigabits per second. Around the back we find a huge full-size backplate protecting the card, though the aluminium plate is pretty boring in terms of design. The I.O. configuration remains standard with a single dual-link DVI output, HDMI 2.0b and three display ports. As we often do, we'll kick off our results with Battlefield 4. Here the Gamewood card was good for 59 FPS out of the box and an impressive 64 FPS when overclocked for an 8% performance boost. The out of the box stats are particularly impressive here. The Goes Like Hell card was 5% faster than both the stock Founders Edition card and the G1 Gaming card and was also 23% faster than my overclock 980 Ti. This card was also 3% faster than the Founders Edition overclock and just 2% faster than its OC'd Gigabyte rival. Next up we've got Far Cry 
Primal. As you can see, the GLH card was our best performer again, with our impressive overclock managing to render 49 FPS. This was a 7% boost over the out of the box configuration, which itself was able to match the overclock Founders Edition card and beat the G1 Gaming card in my results. It was also 21% faster than the 980 Ti with my overclock applied. Star Wars Battlefront showed pretty similar results, again, all in favour of game with cool and quiet card. Here we see a boost of just 5%, however, this was 7% more performance than the overclocked Founders Edition and G1. Out of the box, you can expect to see a massive 12% more performance than the stock Founders Edition and 27% more than the 980 Ti OC. Interestingly, in the division, the stock GLH was able to match the overclocked Founders card as well as the overclocked G1 Gaming at 47 FPS. With our custom overclock applied, it tacked on an extra 4 FPS for a 9% performance boost. With all cards at stock configuration, the GLH was 9% faster than the FE and 7% faster than the G1. In the new Doom game, we see the exact same thing as the division. The stock clock GLH matched the overclocked Founders Edition and G1 Gaming with 73 FPS. Our custom overclock was able to net an additional 5 FPS for a nice little 7% boost. With my comment section in mind, how could I leave out Armor 3? I couldn't. Here the overclocked GLH pumped out an extremely playable 47 frames per second, beating out our other overclocked 1080s by 3 FPS. Out of the box, the card was also great with 42 FPS, which was 19% more than the overclocked 980 Ti. Despite the heavier factory overclock, the GLH consumed no more power than the G1 Gaming out of the box. Overclocked, we see consumption does increase by 28 watts, though this is still less than a stock GTX 980 Ti. This is where the GLH really impressed, the operating temperatures. That massive heatsink proved invaluable here, allowing the card to operate at just 68 degrees under full load in its out of the box configuration. That's a 5 degree improvement over the already impressive G1 Gaming. However, with the fan operating at just 1050 RPM using the auto fan profile, the card was completely silent. Winding the fan speed up to 1500 RPM meant that I could just hear the GLH over the case fans, a barely audible hum if you will. Anyway, this allowed the card's operating temperature to drop down to a chilly 58 degrees. Impressive stuff. Not just that, but when overclocked the card never exceeded 73 degrees, the same temperature the G1 Gaming operated at out of the box. This explains why the GLH was so much faster in some games, it's able to maintain a much higher boost clock frequency. This is more what I was hoping for, decent performance gains over the Nvidia Founders Edition graphics card. On average, the game with GDX 1080 Phoenix GLH was 9% faster than the Founders Edition out of the box, while it was 7% faster with both cards overclocked to their maximum stable frequencies. When compared to the G1 Gaming, the Phoenix GLH was 5% faster out of the box and 6% faster once comparing both cards overclocked. The Phoenix GLH was also 20% faster than our overclocked GTX 980 Ti reference card. Price-wise, I expect the Phoenix GLH to sell for less than the Founders Edition once it goes on sale. How close it will get to the partner board MSRP of $600 though is anyone's guess at this point. What I can tell you is that GameWood's GDX 1080 Phoenix GLH is the best GDX 1080 example I've seen yet. The massive cooler allows it to run cool and quiet while maximising the operating frequency. It's difficult to say if all Phoenix GLH cards will overclock and run as well as the one I have on hand. I could have done well in the silicon lottery after all. That said, the moment they go on sale down under, I'll pick up a second card and let you guys know what I find. Thanks for joining me for another GDX 1080 review. Is the Goes Like Hell card on your radar for purchase now? Let me know in the comments section. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTube